Hey, everybody. This is Christy Furio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Glad you could make it today. This episode of Shift Break is brought to you by Odeco. Odeco is taking the pain and the inaccuracies out of the ordering and inventory process. Of course, staying on top of your ordering and inventory is one of the main things that you need to do to have a good business. Uh, You don't want a lot of waste. You want to have the right stuff on hand for your customers at all times. And uh, this is where Odeco comes in to help. Odeco uses artificial intelligence to put your sales data to work for you. Uh, They couple past sales with local weather and events to predict exactly what your shop is going to need in the future. Their virtual purchasing agent then automatically places orders based on those predictions. They save their clients a ton of time and money and have a more than 90% accuracy rate to boots. So this is something that I think you really should get in your cafe. Automated, centralized, optimized ordering that takes the pain out of the process and makes it more accurate. Now, what's not to love here? So if you want to get it and try it out in your shop, follow this link, odeco.com backslash keys to the shop. Again, that is odeco.com backslash keys to the shop. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about how to ruin the game of telephone. And I think we're all familiar with a game of telephone. If you're not familiar, that game is where you get a circle of people, maybe about, uh, it works best when there's more people, like 10 people. One person uh, says uh, a phrase into the ear of the person to their right or left, and then that person takes uh, that message and repeats it back in a whisper to the person next to them. And they go through the whole circle, and the idea is that by the time the message makes it back to the person who originally spoke it, the message will have been changed. So, you know, you can have something like, five fruit flies went to the gym, turns into, I went to five guys for fries with Tim. And it's similar, but it's a little bit off, and every person adds their own little interpretation of what they heard in it. And the pressure, actually, of the game, it, it in this is just a theory, I guess, but the pressure of the game itself causes people to sort of uh, panic and like turn around and say the slightly wrong thing. They don't take the opportunity to really listen to what's being said. They just assume that they're going to listen and hear accurately and relay the information accurately. And that's a great game of telephone. When the message gets messed up, you've had a successful game of telephone. It's the whole object of the game is to mess up the original communication. Now, in the cafe, of course, this happens all the time. You're probably thinking of instances where uh, something has been uh, communicated through management, and then somehow baristas are parroting back to one another uh, a different message, ever so slightly that, um, you know, the amount of grams of syrup for a 16 ounce is different than was originally communicated maybe a discount on a retail item or a date for the launch of a product. Whatever the communication is, there's lots of opportunity in the cafe for that information to get relayed in a slightly skewed way. So in this case, we don't want to have a successful game of telephone in the cafe. We don't want the message to be um, misconstrued and communicated inaccurately. And so our object is to ruin the game of telephone. There's lots of ways that you can ruin this game. Um, If you're in a group playing the actual game of telephone, one way is to just be a loud whisperer and everyone will hear you. So um, in this case, in the cafe, if you have a, a thorough communication system that broadcasts the message in lots of different ways, Um, and accurately communicates it, then you've done a similar thing. You've removed a lot of the chance that people will misinterpret what you've said because you've amplified the message to your staff, right? Um, Another way to ruin this is institutionally, okay? So let's say that my secret mission (laughs) was to ruin the game of telephone, and I planted like three agents at various points in the circle of 10 people, and their job is to correct the message back to the original, no matter what they heard. So they already know what I'm going to say. I've told them beforehand. So when they hear any deviations, their job is to correct it. So if you've got those people in the circle, the message is not going to go that far off. 
And I think that latter example is how most of our cafes work. We have limited time, we've got limited resources, and you can't necessarily have a face-to-face with every single person yourself. So what you need to do is you need to delegate people to distribute themselves throughout the company to communicate that to the people. And the first place this happens is in management. So one of the main roles of a manager is to make sure things don't go off in one direction too far, but they're moved back to center often. And this is a part of Danny Meyer's book, Setting the Table, where he was given an illustration by a mentor of his early on about moving a salt shaker back to the center of the table. That The point of that section of the book was to say that no matter what you do, there's always going to be something in business that moves the salt shaker from where you want it to be. There's always going to be somebody who, um, you know, maybe innocently enough mishears or misconstrues a message and with sincerity communicates it back the wrong way. And if you don't have people in place uh, to correct that, then it's going to go off in the wrong direction. And unfortunately, this is the reality in a lot of cafes, much like my pet theory on this game of telephone in that the pressure of the game itself it allows you to mishear and misrepresent what was said because you're not using as critical as much critical thinking as you are used to. I think the pressure of the cafe provides this kind of lens that warps the message, um, the stress of the bar, and quickly reading something, quickly agreeing to something without fully understanding it because you want to be agreeable, you want to do a good job, so you just agree to it, but you don't know fully. Um, and, and so... In the cafe, there's not only a need for having people check that the information is accurate, having your managers do that, or you know, amplifying your message loud enough and clear enough that you know um, all the people heard it, but there's also a necessity to breed a culture where questions are welcomed and where managers are also going to be uh, required to get feedback from the staff as to what they heard. So instead of just assuming that everybody knows, test people, not in a way that makes people feel like now there's more pressure, but in a way that says, we just want to confirm that everybody understands fully what's what's expected, what the message was, and now we're not going to run the risk of having uh, that much variation. And again, as the day goes on, as the weeks go on and so forth, there's going to be lots of opportunities for things to get uh, slightly askew. We need to ruin the game of telephone as often as we can by having amplified, clear communication, by having people in positions whose job it is to correct the communication, and to create an atmosphere where we can confirm that what was heard is actually what we said and that it's right on for what the message actually was. So I hope that this episode has been helpful for you, and I would encourage you to, uh, A, don't ruin the game of telephone in the actual game of telephone, and B, please do ruin that game in your own cafe. So thanks again for joining me, and I will see you here next week on another edition of Shift Break, From Keys to the Shop.